Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here once again with Master Yoda, Kevin Frischi of Calvinator Engines. And this is something that may be a mystery to some of you that we're going to cover today in this, and that's degreeing a camshaft. First, why don't we start with why is degreeing a camshaft important? Just like on the bearings where manufacturing tolerances could stack up the wrong direction and, and uh, put you out in an area where you don't want to be, the same way on the camshaft, you know, the, the guy who cuts the keyway in the crankshaft or drills the pin in the uh, camshaft, same way with manufacturing and the cam gears themselves. That's one thing we're just going to double check that the camshaft is where we want it to be. The cam manufacturer goes through great lengths to grind the camshaft for to operate in a specific way and if it is not installed or phased in with the position of the piston in the cylinder it's not going to operate like you want so then you're calling the guy up and you're saying hey this doesn't work like i thought and he was not an, he will not understand he'll ask you did you degree it do you make sure it is where it is so that's what we're going to do so in essence this is verification of the numbers that yes, came with the on cam, the cam shaft. card. Yep. So on the cam card, is, and this was from Comp Cams. This cam was a custom grind, and they, uh, in fact, I think that's all the Comp Cams does. But they set it up these specs, these numbers, specifically to make the engine run a certain way. The the camshaft is critically important to how this engine breathes. So we're verifying that it's going to breathe the way we intend it to breathe by degreeing the camshaft. Yes. So you need something, a uh, degree wheel of some sort. They make degree wheel, cam manufacturers make uh, degreeing kits. Um, this is my, my version of, of my kit. I get the, the larger degree wheel. Uh, the reason I like a larger degree wheel is because the numbers are spaced further apart. The old eyeballs don't work like they used to. <laughs> you need a solid type lifter. Um, and here I have this tool. If you're going to do it a lot, this is pretty nice to have. Since we have a roller cam, the roller has a rounded nose, so I'm using a uh, indicator with the rounded nose that's going to fit in the number one cylinder intake lifter bore and that's going to tell us the position of the cam lobe in relationship to where we're rotating yes. in a degree and this is all degrees of crankshaft rotation correct the uh, then i have installed a stop on the top here if you didn't have a strap to stop the piston um, you could do a dial indicator and bring it down say 200 thousandths in the hole both directions to make sure you have the same reading on the degree wheel. The reason we want to do this is you can't visually just put the piston at top dead center because the piston stays and dwells uh, a certain number of degrees. It could be six degrees. You know, you'll notice the crankshaft will still be moving and the piston looks like it's still standing still. So you're not where you could be off four degrees. Four degrees can make a lot of difference in how the, the engine, uh, the characteristics, operating characteristics of the engine. So in other words, the throw on the crankshaft, on the, on the connecting rod, as it's in the piston, the piston comes all the way up and perhaps it's in this part of the rotation. And so while it's up like this, it still re appears to remain stationary at that one point and then starts to come down and change direction. That's a good analogy. So I just want to double check where the degree wheel is first. Bring it up, it touches, I believe it's on what, 20? Close? You are bang on 20, sir. Okay. Go the other way, and I hope to see 20. If not, we'll adjust. There we go, what do we got? We don't have 20. What do we have, 26? Uh, yes, it looks like 26. Divide that by two, that's three. Six divided by two, I should say. So we'll set this on 23. You're right about that being large and having those spaced apart. Oh! <laughs> it certainly does make things easier. Looks like 23 to me. Double check the other way, because I can't believe it went that smoothly. First thing on this engine, it went smoothly. I'll be done. <laughs> All right, we'll take it. So we removed the strap, we're done with that. So now we've established what true top dead center would be? Yeah, that was called the top dead center method Okay. of setting the degree wheel. And now for the cam specs, I like to use the specifications. Let's see how they do this. They do this at 50 thousandths. The valve timing is at 50 thousandths lift or rise or 50 thousandths lift. The intake will open one degrees before top dead center. It'll close at 41 degrees after bottom dead center. And then I'll look at the exhaust numbers to see how those are. Um, the main spec, 110 degree intake center line. So 
this is really what I'm, I'm looking for and we'll just start right there with that that is where the peak lift of the lobe is in relation to the crankshaft so and for those of you that may be wondering what top dead center and bottom dead center are the piston when it's all the way up to the top and it can't go any further TDC or top dead center when it's all the way down to the bottom of the board that's that's TDC right there is well as close as I can tell when it's all the way down on the bottom of the board ready to head back up that's bottom dead center BTC going in the direction of crankshaft rotation we're going around to the top of the lobe the number one intake lobe zero that guy In the same way with the, how the piston dwells, the lifter will stay at the top of the lobe for a number of degrees. So we're going to go 50 thousandths on either side of the lobe. I got yeah, 69, 69 and a half. Do you want me to write these down for you? Uh, we had off to the corner here. Off to this corner? Yeah, that's fine. Go up to the top, come back down 50 thousandths. And 154 and a half. Add those two together, divide by two. What was the first number? Sorry, I wasn't 69 and a half. 224.5, or 224, zero. So 224 divided by two is 112. And it called for a 110 degree intake center line. So it is two degrees retarded. 112 is after 110, so it's late. So we need to change our crank gear. It's supposed to be the cam was ground to be four degrees retarded, if I'm not mistaken. Advanced. Four degrees advanced, yes. okay. It is ground on a 114 degree lobe separation angle. The intake center line is Let me just recheck my math real quick. So 69 and a half, 154 and a half. <laughs> No, 224, that's what I got, 112, so yeah. All right. So we'll take this part, move it to the advanced two degree keyway. So really thankful they gave us a keyway like that that we can move stuff around in or else this thing wouldn't have worked right if we would just put it together. Yeah, that would have been a bummer. That would have been a real bummer. This is why we degree camshafts, kids. This is why we do this. It don't get out of its way, but it'll go 140 mile an hour. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And that's the kind of thing that we're, we're talking about here because the camshaft changes the attitude of the engine, for lack of a better word, and that it can move the power band up or down the, the RPM range. So you can have your power come in early or you can have your power come in late, and the camshaft dictates that. So uh, if it's, what is it right now, retarded was what we it's found? It's retarded. It's retarded. Uh, so we need to get it to come in where we need it to come in. And thankfully, this timing chain set that is uh, also from ComCams has the ability to, to have multiple keyways so we can advance or retard the uh, camshaft down here on the uh, crank gear. And these are pretty tight tolerances, so it takes like a fair bit of skill to get this lined up and, and into place. I was just going to say, it's making me feel stupid. Your bottom's farther out than your top. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I need a <that> soft hammer. Let's <laughs> see if we uh, hang up there. Oops, now we go too far. Want me to get you that screwdriver? No, we're good. Okay. After we have this done, what we want, we'll have to pull this bowl out and lock tight it and torque it. Okay. So for now, we're just checking it. Yeah. We, don't, we don't need to get the torque. We just need to make sure that it's in the correct orientation. So now that that's all locked together, we don't have to set it each time, right? Well, I purposely make sure everything clockwise, the play taken out is zero. I've learned the hard way over the years. Isn't that how we learn, though? <laughs> yes, it is. 
You don't forget. You don't forget when it's the hard way. Now we have 67 and a half. And 153. 220 and a half. Divided by two. 110. Oh, divided by two. 110.25. 110.25, yes. That's as close as we're going to get it. Okay. So. Yes, the number we were shooting for. 110. 110. Now, just for the heck of it, let me check them other numbers. I have the fixture zeroed on what they call the, the base circle or the bottom of the lobe. So I rotate it until we have 50 thousandths lift. And it's at two and a half degrees. So intake open, two and a half degrees? Yeah. And the cam card, I believe, said one. Yeah, intake one. Yeah. BTC 41 degrees is what we're looking for for the next one. And 50 thousandths before it closes. And this is after bottom dead center. 10, 20, 30, 40, 43. It says, so, 40, it says 41 on the card. I know. This will be all right. A couple of degrees. The, What's a couple of degrees the, between friends? Yeah. The lobe is just <laughs> slightly larger than what the card says by a couple degrees. Okay. But what does it say the lift is? Lobe lift. I think it was uh, 50 thousandths, wasn't it? Oh, 358 is lobe lift on the intake. Oh, okay. They don't all come out exact. Apparently not. It could be some error in me. You know, so I don't get too wound up as, we, as long as we are really, really close. Pretty darn close. Opens at 50. Oh. Exhaust? Yeah. Exhaust is open at 50 degrees? Yeah. It says 49. 352 on the lift. 326. And I believe it said 7. Yep. So, so we're one degree. Very, very close. Yeah. That's good. Nice installation. So had we just installed this and not checked this ahead of time, our power curve would be off. It would not have had as much low end torque. Yeah. And since this is more um, a street driver, that would have that would have really hurt us. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have been wondering why you just got pulled by a Honda at the light. <laughs> if it was my Honda, if it was like my Acura Vigor, that thing's only got like 178 horse when it was new. That would be embarrassing. Very embarrassing. But that Vigor is very torquey. And that would probably be the only one that would take me off the line. But, nah, not anymore. We degreed our camshaft. Okay. Bing, bam, boom. I'm happy. I like it when you're happy. Well, viewers, we have seen firsthand how important degreeing your camshaft is when you're doing a performance build like this, or any build for that matter. You gotta be able to get your torque curve and everything in the correct place. Degreeing the camshaft is the way to do that. Special thanks to Kevin Frischi for helping us out again, Master Yoda of Calvinator Engines. There will be a link in the description to Calvinator Engines. Also, airatthecarguide.com if you have additional automotive questions not covered in this video and links to other things like these tools and all that kind of stuff will also be there. Google+, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram if you wish to connect with me socially. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time.